So, welcome along everyone to a great little uh, sunlit stroll through the woodlands. We've got Dangerous Dave, brilliant little brush there, our large dagger brush, just getting some water on around the, uh, the centre where the light shines. Dangerous Dave, there's, he even nudges the page, is that good? There's a page nudger as well. So, we've got the water in position. I've got lemon yellow now, just dropped on. Nice halo. And cat orange and Indian red mixed together. And again, just using the brush to place down the pigment gently. Sap green. Again, Sapri just blasts in there, joins the party. And again, allows itself to bleed in gently. Cerulean blue. So the further away from the light, the darker the tones. Perilean green now, again even further away, couldn't get much, we're almost off the page. We are almost off the page. But we'll just put in the bulk of the dark green, and if you've not got these exact colours, just use the nearest appropriate colour. Mini Dave making an appearance now, a little bit of water there, just dancing that around the yellow tones in the centre, that gives that nice light effect without actually having any pigment on the brush. How cool is that? Saving work as we paint. Ultramarine, just bringing this in. So we place the brush down then we lift the brush so we get that nice dappled effect. without uh, dragging the brush over the area. Some nice water, can't beat nice water. Mauve and cerulean blue. Just using again the width of the brush, dangerous Dave, to get that on fairly rapidly and following the contours of the shape of the land. Flip the brush over there just to get that uh, smaller areas. This is a great thing about Dangerous Dave. It's a great dagger brush, synthetic, ideal for a lot of, uh, a lot of your work to get loose in your uh, painting. So if you're looking for a dangerous day, just drop onto the shop at loosewatercolors.com. We've got some there, I can sort you some out. No problem at all. Small little dots and dashes now, little dabs as I call them, just to get the smaller incidences on of that colouring. Ultramarine and, mauve, ultramarine and mauve, again, just dragging that across. Darker tones towards the bottom of the page, which are naturally closer to the eye. And a long shadow just radiating back from the what will be the figure. Mini Dave, Indian Red, let's get those tree trunks on. Just dragging down the tree and leaving a little bit of white at the bottom for snow, where the snow drifts up. Mm. 
There's a second tree trunk. And again on the far side. Neutral tint now. Just on the darker side of the tree. So on the right hand side it's going to be the right side, on the left it's going to be the left hand side. And Miss Rigger Brush is joining the party now. Party never starts without Miss Rigger. Just the trees in the distance there. <coughs> when we break the line so it's not just a full tree all the way up, it gives the impression that the leaves are in front of the trunk. Getting finer, just to get the little branches popping off the the tree trunk. And then lightening the tone from the far end, just to give the impression that the sun is bleaching the colour out of the uh, tree trunks. Sap green, perillion green and cerulean blue mixed together. What a combination. Going into the dry area of the paper. Just offer some more foliage. But all we do is place the brush down. The brush is a great shape for this work. In fact a lot of the work is all done just by the brush bin placed down. And this is what makes the painting so effortless. And again just dabbing at your leisure. That should be the title of my next book, Dabbing at Your Leisure. But that's how it's done, just place down, letting the brush do the work. All fabulous. So if you want to learn more about how to get loose in your watercolour painting, please follow my uh, live broadcasts. Everybody's available to watch those when they're on. Uh, Mondays and Thursday evenings in the UK, so whatever that time translates to wherever you may be, so just drop along to YouTube and we always do a couple of paintings there. And uh, if you want to really get to grips with this style, drop on to loosewatercolors.com, there should be a link in the description below, and that will take you to my uh, subscription site. So for a small fee, uh, you've got uh, the uh, opportunity to enjoy over 350 fully narrated tutorials and that really will get you uh, supercharged in your approach to loose watercolour painting. So we're just dragging the shadows away from the trunks behind the tree. So notice how they go opposite directions 
right hand side to the right, the left to the left. Then we just want to suggest where this roadway is, this walkway down the centre of the image, just shadow and also placed where the guy is going to go, lady or guy walking down there. Now a few little flicks from the fab Miss Rigger just down the centre, how does she do this? Just moving those off the tree trunks, letting the brush do the work, Miss Rigger. Just gradually adding these as we go. There's no rush, we've got all the paint on, we've got it all quickly on, and that's the key to it as well. If it's dry, we don't get the benefits of the flow of the paint. A little bit of cat orange there. Light flesh tone. Cat red, got a nice jacket there. Inexpensive one from the uh, loose watercolour range of jackets walking in forests. Only joking, guys, only joking. dark tone, ultramarine blue for the trousers. A little darker tone as we did with the trees, but this is directly behind the jacket. Maybe a little walk in there. Let's call it a ski stick. Yeah. Always useful when it's a little bit slippery. Ultramarine blue, just making the shadows a little bit longer. tint on the side of the tree just give it a bit of bark effect so we're nearly there guys a little bit of splatter with perylene green so if you uh, enjoy that folks do look out for the next installment of the loose journey that you can join in with get yourself ready and uh, prepare to get loose in your watercolour painting. So great to see you and catch you again very, very soon.